Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw review. And tonight's Raw was from the Chesapeake Energy Arena in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And this was Raw's go home show for the Raw Rumble, which is uh, this Sunday. And uh, before I start the review, I uh, just want to say if uh, you haven't checked out the previous video that I uploaded earlier today, I upload uh, the Montez Ford, uh, Angelo Dawkins, uh, the Street Profits uh, video uh, when they were there for Evolve 119 on Friday. It's just a little like one minute and a six second clip uh, just showing uh, when uh, Montez Ford uh, jumped and uh, he touched the, uh, the basketball rim uh, in, the, uh, in the church gym. And then uh, when they both made their entrance uh, for the match that they had. So it's just that little uh, video. So check out that if you haven't seen it. And also check out my vlog where I talked about me and Johnny Gargano also at Evolve 119. So uh, definitely check out those two videos if you haven't uh, seen them. So yeah, so now on to the uh, the Raw review. And tonight's Raw, this was a shitty show. Tonight's Raw was a fucking shit show. It was a shitty go-home show for the Rumble uh, sun for Sunday. It just all in all, it was a shit show. We went from a decent, uh, good show last week, which was fun and entertaining, to uh, this week, which is which was a shit show. So... Yeah, so let's get on with the review. So uh, Raw opened up tonight. They did, you know, a little uh, tribute to uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, since today is Martin Luther King uh, Day, very, uh, very good uh, tribute uh, to uh, Martin Luther King that they did. And then after that, uh, we saw Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out, and. Paul Heyman, you know, does this whole shit tick thing where, you know, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. And so after he's done saying all that, he says last week, Finn Balor pinned John Cena. And Heyman ended up saying Balor stepped up and seized the moment that Cena took the mic and said to Finn Balor that he believes in him which we saw uh, last week uh, before Raw went off the air. And Heyman says the entire WWE universe has stood up to uh, you inside that we believe in Finn Balor. And Paul Heyman says he believes in Finn Balor too. And he says uh, he believes in Finn Balor too and that Balor believes he will show up Sunday and do the very same thing, capitalizing on Brock Lesnar, uh, also and also for the Universal Championship. And Heyman says he believes, and Balor believes that he will capture the Universal Championship. And he ends up saying, uh, this Sunday at the Rumble, Lesnar will turn Balor into a martyr, and sacrifice by making us believe that. Balor could conquer the conqueror, which of course is Brock Lesnar, and also believe in what he takes, what Balor takes for what Brock Lesnar has got for him. And Paul Heyman says the spoiler alert is even miracles can't fear Brock Lesnar. And Paul Heyman says this Sunday it will be Finn Balor on his back looking up and saying oh my god I believe in Brock Lesnar and so out comes Vince McMahon Vince comes out says that Heyman says to Heyman that the only way people can believe in this is you know this could be you know this could be like David and Goliath and so Vince ends up telling the story you know a little story about you know David and Goliath you know that and Vince ends up saying Balor has his fans and Vince ends up taking a shot at the at the Oklahoma crowd the Oklahoma City crowd 
uh, saying if anyone in hillbilly, in hillbilly land, uh, you know, can believe that, you know, that Balor can beat Brock Lesnar. And the crowd ends up booing Vince. And uh, he ends up saying if the peop if the crowd and the people believe that if, that if Balor can beat Brock Lesnar, then we all believe in fairy tales. And so Braun Strowman ends up coming out. Braun Strowman makes his way down. Vince ends up saying to him, you know, what the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing out? And Brock Lesnar, you know, is just playing with uh, with Strowman. You know, just you know, he's just waiting for Strowman to throw a punch at him. You know, he's he's like moving back and forth. You know, like like Lesnar's ready for Strowman. And so Strowman is on the mic. He says, "Last Monday was the worst night of his life because of Baron Corbin." He goes on to say that Baron Corbin. You know, it was the worst night of his life because of Baron Corbin, because Corbin ended up costing him $100,000 and also his shot at the Universal Championship. And he goes on to say that last Monday was the luckiest night for Brock Lesnar. And Strowman says to Brock Lesnar, if, he, if Brock Lesnar still holds the Universal Championship after Sunday, he will be waiting for him. And so Finn Balor ends up coming out. Finn Balor says, "Oh, same old, you know, you know, next week same old Raw, same old Raw." Because he goes on to say that Braun Strowman's out doing his things. Meanwhile, he was the guy. He ends up saying he was the guy who ended up being three other superstars last week, including John Cena. And when and when uh, Balor ended up saying, "Oh." You know, same week, same old Raw. I applauded. I applauded Balor for that because, you know, even he agrees that, oh yeah, we say another week and same old Raw, where we get, you know, 15, 20 minute uh, promos segments every single week to open up, uh, to open up Raw. See, even Balor knows it. And uh, Finn Balor says. He earned his opportunity to face Brock Lesnar, and he says uh, to Vince that uh, Vince knows he can't beat uh, Brock Lesnar, and he ends up saying that you know he thinks he can beat Lesnar, and Vince ends up saying he doesn't believe in fairy tales, and so Balor says at the Rumble he will beat Brock Lesnar and reclaim his Universal Championship. And so, uh, Brock Lesnar steps up to Balor. Uh, Strowman ends up interrupting. He ends up saying he knows he could have beaten uh, Brock. And he doesn't know if Balor can. And, he, and so, Strowman says, well, he better, he better beat uh, Brock Lesnar. That Finn better beat Brock Lesnar. And Balor ends up thanking Strowman for the support, and he ends up telling uh, he ends up telling him to keep his nose out of his business because he's going to do something you know Strowman's never done, and that is to beat Brock Lesnar. And so then we see Brock Lesnar leave, the crowd is booing him, and Vince tells him Vince tells him uh, not to leave. Vince tells Brock Lesnar not to leave. And so, uh, Balor ends up correcting Vince about David and Goliath. So, Balor ended up telling Vince about, you know, about that, correcting uh, Vince on, uh, about David and Goliath. And so, Vince then makes a David and Goliath, you know, match between Finn Balor and Braun Strowman. And that's pretty much how the segment uh, ended but uh, it was a okay segment to open Raw with. Then we had the match: Finn Balor versus Braun Strowman. Brock Lesnar was uh, out was outside, you know, outside of the ring watching it, watching the match. But uh, it was decent from uh, 
from what we saw. It was back and forth between Balor and Strowman. Balor ended up uh, hitting a uh, sling blade to Strowman on the outside. And this was just a match to uh, to push Balor uh, for uh, his match uh, with Brock Lesnar, of course, uh, Sunday at the Rumble. Just, you know, making Balor, you know, make Balor, you know, on fire so they could, you know, so they could get us hyped up for uh, the match with uh, Lesnar. And uh, there was a point where, uh, where uh, Strowman ended up... Uh, Dumping uh, Balor on uh, Lesnar, and Lesnar ended up hitting a, uh, a suplex to Balor on the outside, and uh, you know Balor was just you know going back and forth uh, with working on Strowman and you know working on uh, Lesnar, and so the match ended in a disqualification. Finn Balor ended up winning the match by disqualification because. Brock Lesnar ended up coming in. He ended up pinning the F5 uh, to Balor. So, so that was how it ended. But all in all, it was decent. It was just trying to build up on uh, Balor for Sunday. So. Then we had uh, Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley come out. Uh, Rush says Lashley is better than Ambrose, than Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and better than everyone in the locker room. He goes on to say that they didn't come out, that they both didn't come out here to issue an open challenge, and that Bobby Lashley is a professional fighter, and that they are doing it for the money. He says they can't. Leo Rush says they came out that they, they, that they both came out tonight to celebrate, and so Lashley uh, steps on a pedestal because there was a pedestal uh, in the ring, and it was just for Leo Rush to put the Intercontinental Title around Lashley's waist, and then Apollo Cruz ends up coming out, interrupting it. Interrupted in their uh, celebration. So Apollo Cruz comes out, gets on the mic, congrats Bobby Lashley on winning the Intercontinental Championship. And Apollo Cruz says that nobody paid to see him pose and they don't want to see him compete. And he says, uh, How about if him and Lashley lock up, meaning have a match? And Leo Rush says if he can beat Bobby Lashley in a pose-off, he will get his match. And so Apollo Crews says, you know, he doesn't know how to pose. And uh, Leo Rush was like, oh, you'll never be in, you know, Lashley's league. And so that's when they do the pose-off. Uh, to me, this this was terrible. This this whole this whole segment was fucking terrible. The crowd really enjoyed it for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why those people in the crowd enjoyed it. I mean, at least Apollo Crews uh, was get was given you know some TV time, and when Bobby Lashley was uh, posing, the crowd was booing him. Uh, the pop cheer, the crowd uh, popped for Apollo Crews just doing poses. I, it, this this whole segment was worthless to me, in my opinion. It was fucking worthless. And then we got a. Uh, Bobby Lashley then attacked Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews ended up throwing Bobby Lashley out of the ring. Leo Rush gets involved and Apollo Crews picks up uh, Leo Rush and tosses him uh, on top of Bobby Lashley on the outside. So that's how the segment ended, but fucking terrible segment. It was this this was a worthless segment. Which is Bobby Lashley just posing with his muscles. So that was that was just that was that. It's nothing more I could say about. Nothing more I could say about it. Fucking terrible. Then we have Bobby Lashley versus Apollo Cruz. This was a short match. This was pretty much basically a squash match. That's all it basically was. 
But uh, you had Leo Rush getting involved here. Uh, he was on the apron. Apollo Crews ended up uh, tossing Leo into the ring. Uh, and uh, It just gave uh, Leo Rush uh, you know, advantage so Bobby Lashley could come and spear Apollo Crews. And that's what Bobby Lashley did. Bobby Lashley won the match by spearing Apollo Crews while uh, Leo Rush was still hanging on to a was still hanging on to Apollo Cruz. So that was that was that. Bobby Lashley ends up winning. Pretty much a nothing match. It was a squash match. Then uh after the match Seth Rollins uh music uh hit it. He ended up coming out. He ended up uh having a stare down with Bobby Lashley and then Raw went to commercial. And then when Raw came back from uh, the commercial Seth Rollins was in the ring. He end up he was on the mic and he was saying, you know, today we celebrate the life and legacy of Martin Luther King and that we could learn a lot from him. And Seth says his life is in challenge and controversy. He ends up going on to say that he had two titles in his hands and two brothers. And now he has no titles and no family. And Seth goes on to say, we got to focus on things we have. And his focus and love is the fan, are the fans. And he ends up saying that he's going to Phoenix Sunday and winning the Royal Rumble match. And he ends up admitting that, you know, that's a long shot. And he's like, he doesn't give a damn. He says he's not as big as Drew McIntyre or powerful or powerful as Bobby Lashley and Seth says when the dust settles in when the dust settles in the Rumble match there will be one man headline in Wrestlemania and that is him and so out came Drew McIntyre he says to Seth that he's going to kick his head off and beat him tonight and he says he is an honest man and He's not going to stand by as, you know, Seth lies to himself and the people. Because he says, he says to Seth that there is zero chance that he is going to win the Royal Rumble. He says, McIntyre says to Seth that he hopes and prays they are the last ones in the Rumble. When he throws Seth over the top rope and he announced and the ring announcer says the winner of the 2019 Royal Rumble is Drew McIntyre. So that's how uh, the segment ended. So, and then we had the match when uh, Raw came back from the commercial. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. We saw them go at it uh, many times before. So there's nothing new. I mean, it was a decent match, though. But, uh, you know, it's one that we've seen many times before with them. Seth Rollins ends up winning the match. Uh, he ended up uh, rolling up Drew McIntyre for the win. So, all in all, it was a decent match. But we've seen them go at it many times before. Then we had uh, the Revival backstage. Uh, a lot of news came out about the Revival. Uh, news broke out, I think it was on... Sorry about that, but I was saying uh, there was news uh, about the revival that came out last week. Uh, I think it was on last Wednesday, where uh, the revival are unhappy in their position in WWE, and they want they basically uh, wanted their release from WWE, and WWE uh, wouldn't uh, grant them uh, their release. They want to keep them because they're scared. About AEW because you know they're gonna a when AEW comes you know they're gonna be taking talent uh, from uh, possibly from WWE there are, there's gonna be many superstars who are unhappy uh, in their position in WWE that want to go to AEW and because because of that because of the revival one one to uh, you know want their release from WWE WWE wants to keep them and they want to give them a push. So that they won't leave. 
That's basically what it is. That's basically what they're doing with the revival. But, you know, at this point, I, the revival should just walk out of WWE. Pull a Neville, like how Neville walked out of WWE. The revival should do that. And then go to AEW. I, I tell you, if they if the revival goes to AEW, we will finally get their match versus the Young Bucks. Cause you know they they said uh you know the Young Bucks tweet out, you know, they wanted to have a match with the revival, and if the revival walks out of WWE and goes to AEW, that match will be uh that match will be official. But we will finally get to see the revival versus the Young Bucks. So, yeah, so the revival's there. They uh, Vince McMahon is there. They tell Vince uh, they want a title, another title opportunity, and they want a special guest referee. And Kurt Hawkins is there. Basically, he wants to uh, get into the Royal Rumble match. Vince McMahon says to him that he lost too many matches to be in the Royal Rumble match. So Vince ends up making Kurt Hawkins the guest referee for the Revival's tag team title rematch. So, so yeah. And Vince has has a nerve to say, oh yeah, uh, you know, I like what you guys do. He, he t basically tells Revival, oh, I like, you know, you guys are, uh, sorry about that, but I was saying, uh, in this segment, Vince McMahon ends up telling the Revival that he likes their work. And I'm like, Vince, if you tell the Revival that you, if you say to Revival that you like their work, why are they not the Raw Tag Team Champions? Explain that to me. If you like their work, why are you putting them facing, oh, the Lucha House Party like fucking five times? Can you explain that? Likes their work. Yeah, okay. Okay, Vince. You like their work. If you like their work, you'd be booking them in good tag team matches. Not shit with the Lucha House Party. Come on, Vince. So yeah, so that was that was the other uh, backstage segment with the revival and Vince. Then we had uh, Dean Ambrose end up cutting a promo saying, you know, Seth quoted Martin Luther King. And he says to, he has a message to Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley that he can't wait to see them in the Rumble match. And he's coming after them. He, Ambrose goes on to say 2018 was not his, was not his year and that he spent it in the hospital. And he owes it to himself to win the Rumble. And it will be his moment. And that he owns the road to WrestleMania. And so he says, Sunday, justice will be served. So we had that little uh, promo from Dean Ambrose. And then we get a shit match after that. Lucha House Party versus Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers. Do you even care who wins this match? I, I, I ask you. Do you care? Do you care to tell? Do you care me to tell you who wins the match? If you said Lucha House Party, ding ding ding, you got it right. Lucha House Party wins. Grand Metalik pin in Sunil Samir. Who gives a shit? So, but shitty match. This match should be on either main event or superstars. Why is it on Monday Night Raw? It's because stupid WWE creative. Uh, this was a who gives a shit match. Like, who gave a shit? Then we had uh, EC3 uh, was shown flexing his muscles. Dana Brooke was there just talking to him about, you know, fitness uh, shit or what, whatever. Fitness questions. Who gave a shit? So, then we had Elias. Uh, he was out there. 
saying 2019 is going to be an incredible year after he wins the Royal Rumble. And it's not going to be a easy road. He says tonight he has written a song, which Baron Corbin then interrupts him. And he, Corbin ends up telling Elias to please stop talking. And then we all just, you know, we hear the crowd uh, booing Corbin loudly. Sorry about that, but I was saying, you know, uh, the crowd was booing Corbin. Corbin ends up saying to the crowd to shut up also. And Corbin says to Elias that last week he ratted him out to Strowman and that he almost got he almost got him killed. Strowman almost got him killed. Or well, let me rephrase that. Elias almost got Corbin killed. And Corbin says Vince was right, saying there is a bunch of hillbillies in Oklahoma, which also the crowd booed at him for. And Corbin ends up saying he's going to put Elias in his place. Elias says Corbin can't do that because he is not the acting GM anymore. And Elias ends up telling a crew guy to cut Corbin's mic off. So, uh, so Corbin's mic ends up uh, getting cut off. Elias ends up singing. Uh, you know, Corbin ends up. Uh, <laughs> He ends up singing, you know, Corbin interrupts his performance and, you know, do we really need to see him take on Corbin again? Like, that's what he was, you know, singing. He says Corbin needs to shut his mouth and nobody cares about him. And he ends up saying, oh, why is he still wearing the vest since he got fired? And Corbin ends up rushing to the ring, rushing into the ring. Elias almost hits Corbin with his guitar. And Corbin ends up rolling out of the ring, you know, retreating from being hit by Elias's guitar. That's how the segment ended, but same old, same old shit. Same old shit with Elias. Now we had uh, Baron Corbin versus Elias. How many times we saw this? It, 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 was no, it was nothing new. Nothing special. Nothing great. Baron Corbin got the win with the end of days. And that was that. Match yourself, we saw it, we saw it before uh, a lot of times. Oh my god. Then we had Alexa Bliss come out for a Royal Rumble edition of Moment with Bliss. And Alexa says this Sunday, 30 women will be competing in the Rumble, in the Women's Raw Rumble, and the winner will face the Raw SmackDown, will face the Raw SmackDown Women's uh, Champion for, you know, Women's Championship, or the, you know, the woman, you know, the woman who holds, you know, both the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania. So she introduces the 30 women uh, in the match. Uh, that was revealed. Uh, if you went on WWE.com or WWE's Twitter page, I think they announced it uh, yesterday. Uh, they announced, you know, the 30 women who are the 30 women who are going to compete in uh, the women's uh, Rumble match. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. And she welcomes her guest, who is Nia Jax. So uh, Alexa says uh, to Naya, who would she pick to face if she won the Rumble? And so uh, Amber Moon ends up coming out uh, before Naya, you know, could get, you know, her uh, her answer. <laughs> Sorry about that again. My cat keeps on going uh, in and out of the room. <laughs> it's annoying. But uh, anyways, uh you know, Amber Moon ended up coming out uh, before Naya could uh, answer Alexa's uh, question. So Amber Moon comes out and she ends up saying that she is tired of sitting in the locker room waiting for an invitation to come. And she says this Sunday she is going to win the Rumble. And Alicia Fox comes out. Of course, you, Alicia Fox says 
Oh, she is the captain of this division. Oh, God, we're still doing that. Still doing the captain shit with Alicia, with Alicia Fox. She goes on, well, she says she's the captain of, of this division, and she is setting the course for WrestleMania. And she's going all, and she's going through all the women on Sunday. Yeah, she'll be eliminated. And uh, then Mickey James comes out and says she has stolen the show at WrestleMania before, and she's going to do it again. Then uh, the Riot Squad uh, came out. Tamina, Dana Brooke, Nikki Cross. They all ended up coming out. And uh, they all started to have a little brawl. And Alexa says to them, this is her show. And if, and if it breaks, you know, if it breaks out in a brawl, they will be, they will be ruining her reputation as a talk show host. And Alexa tells them to calm down. And so Naya ends up shoving them. And the brawl uh, ensues. So, and ensues on the stage. It even goes backstage in the gorilla position. Right there. And you know, it cuts back to Alexa on the stage. And Alexa goes to say that, oh, that was unexpected. And she says the only thing she could say is the women in the Rumble are very passionate. And she then announces, you know, the big announcement that she has to make. She announces that she will be competing in the Rumble match on Sunday. And uh, then Lacey Evans ends up coming out. Big fan, fan of Lacey Evans. Uh, really like, you know, really liked her down in NXT. So Lacey Evans comes out. And says, oh, what a bunch of classless, classless little girls. And she, and that she will be winning uh, the Women's Rumble on Sunday. And so, you know, that was that with, uh, with Lacey Evans, where she had to come out and say, but all in all, meh segment with uh, Alexa Bliss, with her moment of bliss. Then we had Titus O'Neil cut a promo saying that he believes in miracles and he announces that he's entering the Rumble match, the Royal Rumble match. And what was funny was a crew member ended up walking on to as uh, Titus was cutting his promo and then walked off. It, it was it was pretty funny though because you saw Titus get pissed at that. <laughs> so and then after that we had a. Uh, Heavy Machinery uh, versus the Ascension. Heavy Machinery, uh, Otis Dosovic and Tucker Knight versus the Ascension, Connor and Victor. And this was a short match. I mean, Heavy Machinery, this was their uh, Raw, this was their uh, in-ring Raw debut. So it looks like they're going to be on Raw, uh, Heavy Machinery. And uh, they end up winning the match. Well, not not surprised there. Heavy Machinery wins. But uh, Heavy Machinery, you know, they're used uh, possibly for this, and then they're gonna be they're gonna be put in more matches, and then they're gonna be uh, put on the sidelines and hardly even used. That's how I see WWE is gonna. That's how I see WWE using Heavy Machinery. I I, I no, that's that that's what they're gonna do. Sorry about that again, but I know, you know, that's what the, that's what they're going to do with Heavy Machinery. WWE is going to put them in matches and then not use them and keep them on the sidelines. That's what that's what they're going to do. They're going to keep them in catering. So, yeah, so <laughs> have no I have no hope for Heavy Machinery. And what WWE is going to, you know, how WWE is going to use them. Then we had Chad Gable and Bobby Roode versus uh, the Revival for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Kurt Hawkins, special guest referee. 
I mean, meh match. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty shit match in my opinion. If you say Chad Gable and Bobby Roode win, congratulations, you are right. Chad Gable, Bobby Roode uh, win. Still retain the Raw Tag Team Championships. Gable end up pinning uh, Scott Dawson. So there you go. You know, there was a point where it looked like that. The Revival was going to win the match. But Kurt Hawkins ended up saying, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You know, with the... Uh, I think you had uh, Dash Wilder holding Scott Dawson's foot on the bottom. And uh, Kurt Hawkins, uh, you know, saw that. Uh, Scott Dawson... Uh, held on to uh, Gable's tights, and uh, Hawkins saw that. So yeah, so much, so much for the big push that they said they were going to get the revival. If I was the revival now, I'd be walking out, be doing a Neville walking out of WWE, staying out of WWE until the contracts are up, and then signing with a with AEW. What? I feel I feel I feel bad for the revival. I feel bad for both Dash Wilder and Scott and Scott Dawson. I'm, they should have been Raw Tag Team Champions already. No, WWE wants to fuck with them. You you could tell you could tell right here that you could tell by all the matches they put the revival in with the Lucha House Party and the other shit that. You know, they put the Revival in. You could tell that they hate the Revival. These guys were two-time NXT Tag Team Champions. They come up to Monday Night Raw. And they book them like shit. All that hard work that Triple H did down did with them in NXT. It's all down the, it was all down the toilet when the Revival made their... their Monday Night Raw debut. Oh man, all that hard work that Triple H did uh, with them down in NXT. I, I can't believe it. How, how do you fuck up the revival? So, yeah, so moving on. Charlie Caruso interviewed Ronda Rousey about her tag team match tonight. Uh, it was going to be uh, it was Natalia and Ronda Rousey versus Sasha Banks and Bailey, and Ronda says she's been thinking and trying to figure out any reason why she might owe Sasha Banks an apology, and she says she ended up coming to the, to the conclusion that she doesn't owe Sasha a damn thing. She says she has been nothing she's been nothing but respectful, and has gotten nothing but resentment in return. She, and Ronda says if, Sha if Sasha is the best, where is, you know, if Sasha is the best, where is her desire to prove it? Her desire to prove it. She ends up saying she's too busy traveling the world like a boss that she can't be champion. And so uh, Ronda says at the Royal Rumble, she's going to show her that. She's going to show her that she's boss. That she's the boss's boss and the Royal Woman's champion. So that's when uh, Rhonda uh, made her uh, entrance, and you know, match uh, before the match, Sasha Banks end up getting on the mic, and she end up asking uh, Rhonda, "Who the hell does she think she is?" So Sasha gave her own credentials and says she did all that she did all you know. That while, while Ronda Rousey came in and got handed everything. So, you know, Sasha was like, oh, I'm a four-time uh, Raw Women's Champion. I competed in the first ever Women's Hell in a Cell match. So she ended up saying all that to Ronda. And that's when she said, that's what she said, you know, to Ronda. That she came in and got handed everything. And so Sasha's like, oh, you want to talk about uh, Desire? And, you know, she doesn't, well, Rhonda was like, you know, Rhonda said that, and Rhonda was like, she doesn't need to tell the world about Sasha because the world already knows her. And that she earned her opportunity by making, Sasha ended up saying she earned her opportunity by making Nia tap out. Just like she's going to do to Rhonda at the Royal Rumble. 
And so after that, the match got on the way. Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Natalya and Ronda Rousey. Tag team match. This was pretty much, you know, typical women's match. Nothing great, nothing special. But uh, Bailey and Sasha end up getting the win. Sasha ended up blocking in the bank statement on Natalya. Natalya ended up tapping out. You know, there are points where, uh, you know, where Sasha and uh, Ronda, you know, it looked like they wanted to, uh, you know, to get, you know, to uh, punch, you know, out each other. And uh, you had Ronda locking in, like, the arm bar on Sasha. Sasha ended up uh, getting to, uh, getting outside, got outside of the ring, you know, to break it up. So... Well, yes, Bailey and Sasha win the match. Then you had, after the match, uh, you had Sasha and Ronda have a stare down. They end up, uh, you know, exchanging words and look like they wanted to, you know, fight and uh, punch each other. And that was when, uh, you know, Bailey and Natalia uh, were trying to separate the both of them. And that's how uh, Raw went off the air. So that was your Monday Night Raw. Shit show. Shitty go home show for the Rumble this Sunday. So, yeah, what more can I say? So, yeah, so, anyways, that's it for my review of tonight's edition of My Night Raw. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this video. And uh, definitely uh, give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all later tomorrow night uh, for a SmackDown review. Hopefully, it's a decent it's a decent show hopefully it's much better than uh, raw was tonight hopefully they deliver for uh hopefully smackdown delivers for their go home show for the rumble tomorrow tomorrow night so yeah so until the smackdown review i'll see you all back here tomorrow night and don't forget if you, like i said if you haven't seen uh, the previous two videos that i uploaded which was uh, my vlog of uh me talking about meeting Johnny Gargano at uh, Evolve uh, last Friday and, you know, the Street Profits video. If you haven't seen both of those videos, go check them out. So I'll see you all back here tomorrow night for the SmackDown review.